Hey, good morning. My name is Chaplain Major Josiah Burns, Sr., and this is my Army story. I enlisted back in the Army back in 1985 under what was called the Delayed Enlistment Program because I was still a junior in high school. Then in 1986, I officially started where I had to be signed in at 17. One of the reasons why I wanted to join the Army, my mama would probably say, I always talked about being in the Army since I was knee high to a duck's ankle. It's always been Army, Army toys, Army movies. I still have vivid memories of staying up late at night watching World War II Army movies, learning things like discipline, honor, sacrifice, duty, and it's just always been in me. I just had a desire just always to serve. Part of what I do right now, my current job is I'm an Army chaplain, but I've been an infantry soldier for the first 15 years of my, uh, of my career, and my last 15 years has been serving as the uh, chaplain. Those first 15 years of infantry, seen me have various jobs as squad leader, team leader, um, sergeant, drill sergeant, senior instructor. Then when I became a chaplain, I started off as a chaplain candidate. I didn't have my degree yet for Masters of Divinity. Went through that program to eventually become a session as a fully qualified chaplain. And one of the main reasons what drew me to the chaplaincy, back when I was on the enlisted side as a specialist, I served in a unit, an instructor unit, where we didn't have a chaplain. We only saw the chaplain once a year, which was around Christmas time. So I had recently accepted my calling. And when I got to the unit, I was made the unofficial acting chaplain where I was allowed to do all the services every month since we didn't have a chaplain. And back then, I was actually approached about becoming a chaplain, but being a husband, father, school teacher, it just didn't fit into my schedule. And the Lord knows it just wasn't time, but I was coming back to it. When I look back at some of the type of schooling and training that I have, I can say that as well. It definitely prepared me um, for the trainings that I received, some of the trainings that I received on the on the enlisted side included infantry basic training, advanced infantry training, basic non primary leadership development course, basic non commissioned officer course, advanced officer commission course, combat lifesaver, and eventually instructor and drill sergeant. Then when I switched over and became an officer to become a chaplain, they definitely prepared me uh, for the ministry that I do in the military. Because I started off by going to Chaplain Basic Officer's Training Course, um, followed by Combat Medical Ministry, Traumatic Event Management, a course called Moral Injury, uh, eventually finished Intermediate Level Education, and Operational Religious Support to be where I'm at at this current point. When I think about the best memories of training that I've had, oh, that, I, that just covers the wide spectrum. But probably for the chaplain side, I'm gonna say the best memory of training I received was at the morgue. When we was at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, they took us to the morgue for a night of training. And I'll tell you what, after staying in the morgue and seeing bodies of, in all various stages, that'll prepare you pretty much for anything that you can see on the battlefield. So I would have to say that was my best memory of training on the chaplain side. Then when I flip back to my infantry days, probably my best moment of training would have definitely been uh, the 36 mile death march completed over in Korea. Uh, that really that was some great training, put a lot of hard knocks in me, so I can say that probably was the best. When I think about my first assignment, my first assignment was the 347 Infantry out of Fort Lewis, Washington. Great assignment. When I think about what brings me the most fulfillment as a chaplain, what brings me the most fulfillment is the fact that in this role, I get to help soldiers to make it through their day. I get to bring the word of God uh, to some, introduce it to some, and convince others to, con to stay in the fight. So it, it allows me to do the thing that I've been called to do. So I am definitely glad to be serving as a chaplain, and I love to finish my career as a chaplain. Somebody asked what was my favorite duty location? Wow, I have so many great spots, but I'm gonna say my favorite on the enlisted side takes me all the way back to that famous band of brothers 
first of the 506 infantry. I still got my, my patches, my DMZ badge, and the curry he from the, from the movie. Everybody know the Band of Brothers. So it was definitely my honor and privilege to be a part of the first of the 506 infantry. Uh, loved that assignment and wouldn't change a thing. So how did I imagine life before I joined the Army? Well, to answer that question, I'll start off by saying I grew up as a child um, watching those World War II movies late at night and learning things like honor, discipline, and duty, and sacrifice, and all those things kind of, I just knew I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be a part of a band of brothers, people that would trust me with their life, and that I could trust with my life. And if I was asked the question, how has that changed since I've been serving these 30 years? My perception has not changed. I have definitely been proud to serve with the people, the men and women that I've served with, that I can call my brothers and my sisters. I trust them with my life, and I know they'll trust me with theirs. So nothing has changed. My perception has only grew from my love and anticipation for serving in the Army. That's why I'm still here. How has the military affected me so far, time-wise? Well, when I think about a span of 30 years, seven commander-in-chiefs two deployments. That's a long time. I've seen the Army go from be all you can be, Army strong, Army one, back to be all you can be. We've come full circle. So I would say my time, it has affected me in a great way. It only makes me wish I had longer time to stay even further in the, in the Army to contribute more. And I'll caution, or not caution, but I'll, I'll commend those who are thinking about it. This is definitely something you'll want to do because it is definitely a lifetime commitment. What are my hopes for the chaplaincy? My hopes for the chaplaincy is that we will continue to be diverse so that we can offer all things to all soldiers and that they, again, can still get a touch of home and get that minister, that pastor experience that they got when they was on the civilian side and introduce the ministry to those who've never seen it. So my hope is that we will continue to diversify and be that, that force. And also too, that commanders in every unit will really understand the vital role that chaplains pay, play as a force multiplier in their units, because we have a lot to contribute. And without a chaplain, I don't know, that's a sad situation. You gotta have a chaplain somewhere floating around. Somebody asked the question, what military experience, experiences have affected my life? Well, there's too many military experiences that I could share with you. But I would say that the overall discipline and everything that the military has contributed to me has helped me both on the civilian side, since I've been the Army, I've been National Guard, Army Reserve, active duty. It has definitely helped me on the civilian side as an educator in the classroom, teaching grades first through, through 12th, and yeah, it has helped me greatly to bring that discipline piece, that dif discipline piece to my classroom students so that they can see this is what right looks like. This is the Army culture. And I've been able to put a little touch of that in the classroom and hopefully that will change the minds and the hearts of some of those young students that they would actually come in. Also too, on the civilian side, as a, as a former entrepreneur and business owner, you know, I can't change the people that work for me, but I, I think what I've been allowed to show them is that this is how the military do stuff. When we're given a task, we do it to completion. And so I would show those people that work for me and with me that it doesn't matter how hard the task is, we're gonna, keep, we're gonna keep plugging away at it until it's done. So my experiences has been, I would say more on the positive side than the negative, and I have nothing but great things to say about the Army. Life lessons that I have learned from my service. To answer that question, I'm gonna read a quote. Quote comes from this guy here, Klaus Wick. If you haven't read this book, great book on war. But one of the famous quotes he read, he stated was this, the whole of military activity must therefore relate directly or indirectly to the engagement, the end for which a soldier is recruited, clothed, armed, and trained, the whole object of his sleeping, eating, drinking, and marching is simply that he should fight at the right place and the right time. So my life lesson that the Army has given me is about engagement, being ready to face whatever you have to face head on. And, you know, as a young person coming into the Army, I was willing to face tasks, but I didn't have that confidence. 
The Army helped give me that confidence through God. I have that confidence to engage whatever comes my way. So what message would I leave for those who are thinking about joining future soldiers? If there ever was a time to serve, the time is now. The Army, all the branches need your service. I don't care if it's for two years, four years, or a 20 year commitment. We need men and women that will stand up and say, send me, I'll go. Your service will be greatly appreciated. I would also too add the dedication, the commitment, the camaraderie, all these things you're gonna gain only comes from gaining an Army family, a band of brothers and a band of sisters. The Army definitely can use your service. So don't be afraid to serve. I'm living proof that it doesn't matter. You can do it. I was able to do it through the help of God. You can do it too. So come on in and be a part of our force. Be all you can be. One last thing I would like to share about my Army experience that I probably never shared with anybody. You've had the chance to meet Chaplain Burns, whether I was the chaplain or whether I was the drill sergeant or whether I was that infantry specialist, whatever. If I had a chance to work with you, if I, were able, if I was able to help you in any kind of way, if there was any type of wisdom tips or words of expression that just blew your mind, I want you to know that didn't come from Chaplain Burns that came straight from God. I take no credit for that. I just thank God that I've had the opportunity to be a part of your life and God has allowed you to be a part of mine and it's been an honor and a privilege serving with you these 30 plus years. So what would I like for you to remember about this story? Well, for the most part, what I would like for you to remember that over the last 30 years, I've been more than blessed. The Lord has more than blessed me. I've had nothing but fulfillment with my Army service and my Army career. And I'm, I'm proud to say that through the help of God that I have been blessed to serve on the front lines with the infantry. I have been blessed to teach others how to serve and live on the front line as a drill sergeant. I have been blessed to provide ministry on the front lines as a chaplain. And now I'm even more blessed to be able to help others to come in and fulfill that role while I'm recruiting, either as a chaplain or as a soldier. And my frontline experience, I like to tell people on the infantry side, my first deployment was with a weapon. My second deployment as a chaplain was as a weapon. And I thank God that he allowed me to serve. Be blessed. This is my Army story. My name is Chaplain Major Josiah Burns Sr. and I'm proud to serve.